In this video you will learn 4 super important things inside Angular. And I am talking here about ng template, ng container, ng content and ng template outlet. First of all, let's look on the usage of ng template. Let's say that we want to render an article inside a div. And typically we will write here div class, for example, article. And inside this div we want to render our article dot title. But our article is not always there. This is why here we want to write ng if, and here will be check for our article that it is there, else loading. At this point we will get an error inside console that property article does not exist inside app component. So we must create it here and let's say that our article is by default null and it can be either an object with field title string or it can be null. Now we are getting another error inside console. Property loading does not exist on type app component. And actually at this moment we will create ng template. So we are writing just a tag here ng template and we must close it. Now inside this ng template we will put a hash loading. And this is exactly this reference between our ng if else loading and the name of our ng template. And what we want to do now here we can write for example a div with the loading text. Let's check it in browser. As you can see we are getting here a loading. So what is this at all? This is actually not just some tag, it is a directive. And the main idea is that by default we are not rendering ng template at all. It is just there, but it does not exist, it is not rendered. And it is being used inside structural directives. What are structural directives? For example, ng if, just like we used here, ng switch, or for example, ng4. Now let's check that here we can render an article if it is there. Which actually means here we are changing it from null, for example, to object with title foo. And when we are jumping inside browser, you can see here the full string, which actually means this is really a nice approach if you want to render a div, and if your condition is false, then you are rendering a template, which is predefined inside else. So the question is when you must use ng template. And actually you will never use ng template on your own. You will use either with predefined directives like ng4, ng if, ng switch, or with your custom structural directive. And one more important point is how Angular uses this code and transpiles it at all. Actually, this is not the code how Angular is reading it. Actually, Angular generates ng template just like we wrote on the bottom, but inside itself. And inside this ng template we have two directives. First of all it is ng if, and here we are writing our article, and second directive is ng if else. And here inside we are providing loading, which actually means here inside this directive we are providing a reference to our ng template, and here we are just checking article like normal. And now inside our ng template we will have here div class article, we are closing here our div and we are rendering here our article dot title. And actually if we will reload the page you can see that it is working exactly the same. But this is how our code with ng if is working under the hood. And ng template is a really nice approach but a lot of people don't like to use it. Because sometimes it is much simpler to write here div class article and we are just checking here ng if article. So if we have an article then we render inside this article dot title. And we have just another case with div for our loading. Let's say here we have our div, we have loading text inside and here we can simply add our ng if not article. In this case we are showing loading. Let's check this out, it is working exactly the same. And from my perspective this code is much easier to read. Now it is time to talk about ng container. So why do we need it at all? Sometimes we want to pack several directives inside one div. For example here we have div ng if and we are checking here that we have our list of articles and then we want to write here ng4 and we want to loop through these articles. And this is not possible. You can't use several structural directives inside one div. Which actually means you must create here one more div and write here first of all ng 
if articles and then inside you will have one more div with this in G4. And in some cases it won't work for you. Why is that? Because inside your code, inside CSS, you might have some nesting of styles and you can't really work with such nesting. Because in this case here we are creating two divs. This is why in a lot of cases we want to avoid creating for example this additional div. And then we can write here ng container. And in this case, this div won't be visible inside our HTML. It will be there just inside our markup and Angular won't render it. But the main idea is that we can attach these directives inside ng container. And now our code can look like this. For example, we have ngif with ngContainer, and then inside, for example, we can use one more ngContainer and write here ng for directive. And let's say that here we want to loop through the array of numbers. This is why here we must close our ngContainer, and let's create now our numbers inside component. So our numbers will be just an array 1, 2, 3. The main idea is with this markup, we are not creating any DOM elements at all, we simply render three numbers inside. So inside ng container we can render our number. And obviously we must change here our articles to our numbers. Let's reload the page, we don't have any errors, and here is 1 to 3. And actually what is more interesting when we will zoom our DOM, you can see here I have h1, and after this I have just 1, 2, 3, and comment for ng container, because actually ng container does not render any markup at all, which in this case is extremely important. So when you should use ng container, when you have a case that you want to avoid creating additional DOM nodes. Our next directive is ng content, and actually we are using ng content only with child components. So here I have an app component and I created already a component child. As you can see inside I don't have any markup except of ng content. And here is my child component ts which is completely empty, which actually means this is just a component where inside our HTML we have ng content. And the main idea is that now inside our parent we can render this component app child. And here we are closing app child. And if we will write it like this, it won't render anything on the screen at all. Because actually inside we just rendered ng content. And inside ng content we are rendering everything which we will provide inside this app child inside parent. Which actually means here we can write our div and here we want to render for example article.title. In this case here this is the whole markup that we will pack inside our app child. As you can see in browser now we are getting an error, object is possibly null, so we need to put here a question mark. And as you can see now it is working, we rendered full stream, which actually means the whole markup inside our parent will be rendered inside child. And it is really needed when you want to write some markup inside your child component, but you also want to provide some markup from the parent. And last but not least is in G template outlet. And why do we need it at all? For this I want to uncomment ng template loading and actually here now I want to write loading template, just to understand that this is a reference for the template. What we want to do now, we want to use our ng container and now inside we want to provide a directive ng template outlet. Now here let's close our ng container and inside this ng template outlet we can provide our loading template, which actually means this is the way to render ng template inside our HTML just like normal element, without using for example ng if or ng for. As you can see here inside browser we successfully rendered our loading component. Which actually means here we have ng container and we are not creating additional DOM node. And now inside we are rendering this loading template through ng template outlet. Which actually means we are using it when we must render a template. But it is not all, we also can provide properties inside our template. Let's say here that we want to create a new template to render an article. So here let's name this template article template and here now we can write let and for example article equals article. And you might ask ok but what is this notation? Actually this is how we are passing properties to the template. Now here inside our div we can render our article dot title. Which actually means our ng template is waiting for the property article. And now here we have normal access to article property. 
but don't forget that you must write here let and dash. Now how we will use this template? Here instead of loading template, I want to write article template. After this I want to put semicolon and write context equals and here for example we can provide an object with field article. Why we are writing it like this? Because actually inside context we must provide an object and it makes a lot of sense to write for example article as a property inside this object. In this case later we can add more and more properties. And now this whole context is available inside this template and we can get properties of this context with let article for example. And this is this property that we provided inside context. Let's reload the page and as you can see here foo is rendered. But as you can see here we have just ng template outlet, we are not rendering foo. This is the code which is working, this is just rendering of the template with providing our article inside. And actually if you are interested to learn how animations are working inside Angular, make sure to check this video also.